Welcome to this Zoom webinar on power searching with CEDP EBSCOhost eResources databases. My name is Lisa Nash from Learning Exchange and we welcome Kylie Peckham from EBSCOhost who will give us her expert tuition on how to power search with EBSCOhost databases. If you don't know your access to your e-library, which is where these EBSCOhost e-resources data, databases are, you just need to go to Classmate, which is classmate, and so it's m8.para.catholic.edu.au, um, and click on e-library. You will be asked to log in. You just use your Google login. Once you get to there, and I'll just... Click onto your library, your e-library, and for me, it's at Learning Exchange. For the rest of you, it will be at your own school library. And then you click on this e-resources page. Once you click on there, you'll land on this page here. Okay, and these are all our suite of databases that we have access to. So we're not going to be going through all of them. Um, Kylie's going to show us a way that we can power search across all of them. Now, these databases are just excellent in terms of um, great authoritative learning materials for students, but also um, great material, uh, professional learning um, access for yourself. So, you know, use this time to have a think about how you can utilise these resources to support your learning and your students' learning. So I will click into, so Kylie, did you want to just briefly introduce where we're going to go to and then I'll click into that for you? Yeah, so what we're really focusing on today, as Lisa said, we really want to showcase uh, to you all a way in which you can run what we're calling a power search over more than one EBSCO database. And I'm going to be selecting all of your databases um, today in one of my searches. So it's a really powerful way of running a search, looking at your um, data, your um, information that's coming up in all of your EBSCO resources that you are subscribing to. And when we run this search, what we're calling a power search, we're actually going into the EBSCO host tile that's just at the bottom of your resources list here. So that's where Lisa's going to click in for me. And Lisa, you can click in there at the moment and then perhaps uh, if you can give me access, mm -hmm. I'll take over from here. So Lisa has clicked on the EBSCO host tile. What you'll see, what will come up is the databases list. So it's really important for people to realise EBSCO host is our interface and your databases, they are all listed here. And I'll run through this. Um, so have I got access yep. up to my screen? Okay, I'll stop sharing my screen. Yep, thanks. Okay. okay, so just so, so that we're not uh, having things slow down too much, I've actually, on my computer, I've gone into really the same link that Lisa has just clicked on for us. And you can see it takes me to a database list. Now, those of you who have used, can, ev can everyone see that? No, just click on share. Uh, share, here we go, that's better. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yep, good. Okay, so it's taken me to the list of databases uh, when Lisa has clicked on that EBSCO host tile. So these are all of your EBSCO databases that you can access via the EBSCO host interface. And if I scroll down, there's quite a few resources in here and some of them you will be familiar with, your students will be familiar with. So we have the Australian New Zealand Reference Centre, for example. And this is the database. When I think of this resource, this is really my go-to for my local, my Australian and New Zealand content for my magazines, my newspapers, newswires, journals, uh, for example. And then as I scroll down and note that I can select um, just a few as I go through. Masterfile Premier is a terrific database containing lots of reference book information. Um, so full text for 
uh, reference material and also journal material. You can see here that it's mentioning 500 reference books in here. History Reference Centre is our history database. So you can select more than one. And what I'm actually going to do today, I'm going to select all. Now there is a note that will appear Selecting all databases can slow you down, but generally I find that it really doesn't, it doesn't cause too much of a problem. We'll see how we go this afternoon. I can select all databases and I can continue. Now you can select a few or you can select all. You can play around with your searches and see what type of results you get back. Let's select all today. Now you can see here that if I click on show all, where it's telling me that I'm searching, it will actually list all of the databases that I have selected. And that's everything that you subscribe to. Now, before I begin my search, there is just a couple of things I want to show you. So I'm just changing my screen just to a very short PowerPoint presentation. Now, some of you who have attended my webinars or my on-site training will be familiar with the concept of searching using your Boolean operators. And I've popped some examples on the screen for you and I will demonstrate using the Boolean operators today. As a default, when you're entering your keywords into your search field, we do put the AND Boolean operator as a default. You don't need to, to uh, type that in when you're running your search. But you can use your OR Boolean operator to broaden your search. I do this quite often. And you can use NOT. So I'll play around with these today and give you some examples. Just a couple of other search tips for you. Now the truncation symbol is the asterisk within your EBSCO databases. And quotation marks can be used for phrase searching. So this is something that I like to use uh, and it's quite easy for you to share these concepts with your students and your teachers. Uh, so quotation marks for phrase searching can be very popular. We also do have the single character wildcard and the multiple character wildcard for different um, instances of spelling, for example. I'm not using those all the time, but my truncation symbol and my quotation marks, I certainly am. So keep that in mind. Now, for my search, first example today, I'm actually going to use a topic that uh, some students introduced me to. Uh, Lisa and I did some on-site training at a couple of your schools uh, a month or so ago. And in fact, while I'm talking, I'm getting distracted. Human remains and the preservation of human remains was a topic that uh, one of our classes was currently investigating and it was a really interesting topic. So I'm going to begin my search on this particular subject today. And I'm really just searching on three keywords, but keep in mind I can expand this search. And also keep in mind, I am searching a number of databases. Now this is, um, a more specific topic. So I'm getting just under 400 results. I'm still getting some good material here. But of course, I can also alter my search. I can pop my human remains in quotation marks to look for that as a phrase. Um, perhaps I could also truncate my preservation to pick up uh, preserving preservation preserve, for example, and I can run that search again. So at any time you can change your keywords, you can add, you can alter your keywords, you can truncate, um, for example, and you can take a look at the results coming through here. Now when your students are running searches, a few things to make sure that they are aware of, please be aware that the sort order by default is by relevance, relevance to your keywords that you have entered into the search. And note that you can change this to date newest, um, for example, that might be of interest uh, to students and it, you can easily come back to relevance at any time. You also have your refine results options on the left hand side here. I can limit by publication date range. I can add a publication date range into my search and it's an automatic update. I could perhaps limit to peer reviewed material only, material coming from a peer reviewed journal. 
I could also limit by source type. Perhaps it's information coming from journals uh, or magazines that I'm interested in more so than newspaper or newswire articles. And you can also limit perhaps by subject. If this is a subject that your student doesn't know a lot about, they can select some subject headings. You can also click on show more and it will bring up a pop-up window and they can select, um, I, I can scroll down here. I won't refine my search too far at this stage here. So you do have some refine options available to you. Now, one thing to note, it's important to understand that in your EBSCO resources, your full text may appear in one of two different formats. Number one is a good example. Uh, this is coming from Archaeology Journal, an article in 2017. I have the full text article in a HTML format and also in a PDF format here as well. If you click on the title of anything in your results list, it will take you to a detailed record where you can view things like the abstract. You can find out a little bit about the article before you click on the full text. Let's have a look at number six here. I'm clicking on the title. It takes me to the detailed record. And at this point, I can view some of the subject headings. I can read the abstract. I can see that there are some images attached. And then on the left-hand side, I can click to view, to read the full PDF, the PDF full text here. One thing to note on the right-hand side of your screen, you have all of your EBSCO tools available to you. So this is where, if your students or your teachers have found some really terrific information, what can I do with that information? You can save to your Google Drive. You can save to Google Classroom. You could email this article to yourself or to a colleague, to a student. If you are emailing, you can choose the appropriate citation format and include the citation in that email here. Enter your email address or addresses and then your send button will send that email. Uh, we also have the permalink tool on the right hand side. This is quite useful. If I click on permalink, a persistent URL will appear at the top of my page, just above the article. And this is the URL that I would use if I'm wanting to share this article uh, or perhaps create a reading list in LibGuides um, or email a few articles to, to a classroom perhaps. So this is a direct URL that will take your users back to this article. If you use your URL at the top of your web browser, that's a session URL. It will not take your uh, users back here. So you must use the permalink option. So all of your useful tools are available on the right hand side of the screen. And we can see also, remember I've conducted a power search and I've selected all of your EBSCO resources. You can always see which database the information is coming from. So the document that you found this particular article is coming from the History Reference Centre. So that can be of interest if you are running a power search. Let's take a look at the PDF full text. The PDF will open while this is loading for me. Just note on the right hand side of the page of the screen, I have all of my EBSCO tools once again. My save to Google Drive, my email, my site option. I'm going to click on site and the citation will appear in a number of different formats. So you can just copy and paste the citation into your bibliography, your endnote, your footnote, for example. And you can just um, close down the site option here. Let's just scroll through. So a PDF will look like a scanned article. This particular article has some images, some photographs here relating to human preservation from ancient Egypt. And on the left-hand side, note that this particular magazine, Ancient Egypt magazine, the whole issue has really loaded in my web browser. I can become quite distracted actually, and I can 
jump through to other articles and they will load on my screen for me. Just take a minute to download. And then if you do want to get back to your original uh, article on human preservation, you can click on the detailed record. You can also jump back to your results list here. Uh, just a second. Let me just go back. Back to my results list will take me to my previous list of my human remains here. So that's really just a keyword search. Now there's a few things I can do with this search and the advanced search form is worth pointing out to you. With the advanced search form, you can play around with your keywords. Note that my autocomplete is turned on. So as I'm typing, it's actually uh, directing me to perhaps some options, maybe preservation or treatment might be of use. Um, and I can truncate that preserve preservation again. And perhaps I am looking for some information from ancient Egypt or ancient China. You can add some additional um, fields, uh, keywords into your field. And you can also have more than the three fields that are here as a default. So you can run this type of search. So I'm using my quotation marks. I'm also using my Boolean operator of or. So human remains and preservation or treatment. So I now have over 1,000 results coming up rather than the original 400 or so uh, that were coming up just with the preservation here. I'd like to show you a HTML file. Kylie, can we also maybe try a... Um something that might be suitable for their professional learning too. So maybe feedback sure. feedback in mathematics or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, let's clear this search. Um, so mathematic, yep. mathematic education. Yep, and then and feedback. So, yep. You want the in education or just mathematics? Mathematics, let's see how that goes. But you can see when I start typing in, oh, we've got lots of, lots of results coming up here. But keep in mind, we can use our refine options here. So I have popped education in. You could even perhaps pop in Australia or Australian curriculum, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So really when you're coming up with your keywords, just playing around, you can make some changes as you're going through if you're finding too many results or not, not enough results coming up. And then perhaps one thing, just note that it is always worth limiting to full text here. This will make sure that any abstract records are removed from my results list. So if you want to be able to see the full text, you can see that lots of these uh, articles are coming from ERIC, which is one of our databases. But I can also perhaps have a look at my subject headings. So perhaps teaching methods might be of interest as well. I can just select, or I could type teaching methods up here with my keywords. And then I can take a look, just scrolling down to see what we've got here. So um, primary mathematics education, student emotions related to mathematics tasks. Let's click on the full text. And from Eric, just take a look for the download full text link on the right hand side. And this will download in a PDF format for me. Here, I have my full text for this particular article. So you do have lots of professional development material in a number of your uh, EBSCO resources, for example. So that's a great example. That's a great search example. I'll just close this one down Thanks. and we'll come back to our main screen. So. Don't forget about your advanced search form. There's another um, way I can use my advanced search form. Perhaps I'm looking for some information from a particular journal. I can use my source field and maybe I'm looking for another topic we were searching on was prosthetics. 
here, looking for anything from a particular source. 87 results coming up. And of course, if I took the source out and ran this keyword search, I would get thousands of results. But once again, I can click on my heading. So waiting for an arm and a leg from Popular Science. This is an older article, but it is sorting by relevance. I can scroll down, take a look at my subject terms and read my abstract. And then in this example, I have a HTML full text and a PDF. So the full text is available in two different formats. Let's have a look at a HTML full text. It's really just plain text. Here, you can scroll down. Now, with your HTML full text, there are a couple of um, tools that you have that are not available when you're looking at a PDF full text. One of them is the listen to text to speech function. And students love this. They can plug their headphones in, they can hit the play button and they can have the article be read to them. And when I hit play, it will actually highlight the words as it's being read. And when the student hits pause, it will, they will easily be able to see where they're up to. And you also have your translate option here where you can translate to another language uh, very quickly, just in a couple of seconds. So this can be useful for some of our schools who do have a uh, international student population perhaps, or people with a home language, first language that is something other than English and straight back to English here. So that's another example of how you can use your advanced search form. I do want to point out to you the publication searching before we finish up. Now keep in mind, I have conducted what we call a power search. I have selected all of your EBSCO databases. And with your publication searching here, you can only run a publication search on one database at a time. And that's why I wanted to show you this option where from my advanced search, I can run a source search and I don't have to select a database. It will just pick up these articles from Popular Science in any database. However, with my publication searching, I do have to choose my database. Uh, perhaps let's go into Science Reference Centre and I can run a search on perhaps New Scientist. You could also check in here to see if any of your uh, publications, your professional development publications are included. Once you've found your journal of choice or your publication of choice, search within this publication. And then you can, um, let's have a look pros prosthetics in this particular journal and have a look. My autocomplete is actually assisting me. I can broaden my search. Here. Perhaps I can put my artificial limbs as a phrase and run that search. What about um, something like Sydney Morning Herald as well? Carly? Absolutely. Yeah, so 99 results. I can run a publication search. We'll jump into the Australia New Zealand Reference Centre. Um, find the publication, whether it's a newspaper, a journal, a magazine, a reference book. Once you've found the publication, click on the publication name, search within this publication, and I'll just pop in election. And it works exactly the same way, whether you have searched for a newspaper or a journal or a reference book. So that publication searching is quite powerful. And I can also run this using that source field as well. Always more than one way of doing something in your EBSCO databases. So the power search is really allowing you to search across all of these resources in the one go here. Keep in mind you do have your EBSCO host basic search and you have your advanced search. And just to point out to you with the advanced search, 
I've been really focusing on these three fields at the top of the screen, but if we scroll down, there are some limiters you can apply before you execute your search here. There are also some expanders. So if I'm running a search on um, teen driving and or teen driving problems, let's, let's take that one here. I can perhaps also search within the full text of my articles. As a default, the database is searching certain fields, your title, your subject headings, your abstract, your author details. You can broaden your search to search within the full text if you're not finding enough information, but you can also limit, apply limiters before you execute your search here. Um, perhaps I'm looking for number of pages less than three from this particular database. So you will find special limiters for the databases that you have selected here. And I can run that search. So don't forget to scroll down with your advanced search form. There are certain limiters and expanders you can apply before you execute the search. And keep in mind, you can apply your limiters after the, after the fact as well. I do want to touch on folders. So we do have folder functionality and within your network, keep in mind I'm now working on my laptop uh, in the webinar, but you do have folders and you have single sign-on. Um, so if you are using your folder functionality, these items that you're selecting, using the folder icon will be saved to your EBSCO folder. You can view items in your folder top right hand toolbar, just your folder icon. And you can view your items that you've added to your folder. You can review, so I could delete, and then I can action these items. So I might perhaps send these in an email, uh, sorry, select all. Ah, it will do it without selecting all. Yes, it has. It has selected them for me automatically. When I click on email, I could email these uh, reading articles to my students or to a colleague, to a teacher if I was a student. And then just press send. If you are using the email functionality, once again, choose the appropriate citation format and the citation will be included in the email that's sent here. Always clicking on EBSCO host to come back to your home page. And keep in mind at any time, you can show all of the databases and you can jump back in to choose databases. I might want to only select a couple of resources here, perhaps my master file premiere, lots of reference book and journal material, my Australian New Zealand Reference Centre, all of my newspapers, magazines, journals, and perhaps my science reference centre, specific science related publications and I could run a search on three databases. So you're in control. You can choose the databases. You can reselect at any time. When you run a search, remember you can refine and you have all of your tools available. If I click on the title, all of your tools are always available. I, I refer to these as sharing tools. If you find some terrific information, what can I do with this information? Google Drive, Google Classroom, email, site, and your permalink here. Are there any questions? If there are, just um, pop it into chat or uh, put your hand up and I can give you um, uh, audio access if you have any questions. I've been monitoring chat, Kylie. Um, okay. Uh, there was a couple of questions just about the um, truncation um, symbols and things like that. So that was good. Um, they said that was answered. Oh, good. I think, look, if there are any other questions um, that you think about, you can always email me lnash at para.catholic.edu.au afterwards. Um, and I can't see any questions here at the moment or anyone putting their hands up. So okay. I'd just like to thank Kylie for giving us this 30 minutes on power searching. I think we've learnt a lot about 
um, really getting the most out of all our databases. This is just a quick introduction to it all. Um, please explore it. And uh, if you go to your e-library page, there's a CDP Libraries help site as well. And Do you want me to share that back to you? I've just stopped sharing so you can show that, Lisa. That might be worth showing. Yep. So um, just a reminder that if you're back at your library portal, there's a CDP Libraries help site for all our schools. And we've got videos um, on all the different digital resources. So if we go to there, show me all the digital resources, um, and you go to the e-resource database list, it gives you the, the links back to it, but it also gives you the resources that are available as well. So feel free to, so for students, there is how can I search for an online article? There's some paper guides and there's some video tutorials as well. Okay, so have a little um, look through that. Thanks everyone for attending and um, we hope to see you soon. We've got another one coming next week, which I'll send out some information and it's about setting up journal alerts. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks everyone.